Today's Mercedes-Benz interview of the day brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Mercedes-Benz has an SUV for you, whether it's the stylish GLC, compact GLA, three-row GLS, or the GLE and GLC plug-in hybrids. Visit MBUSA.com for special offers. Your phone calls will be welcome, 877-3DP-SHOW. We will settle on a poll question as well as we bring in the head coach of the Oregon Ducks, Dan Lanning. Congratulations, Coach. How did you celebrate after the win against Ohio State? Uh, we started recruiting. We, we had a bunch of kids on campus, so we, we spent a ton of time uh, with the people that came to see us. And uh, there was a lot of smiles around the building, but it was time to try to figure out a way to, to help get our team better. It's kind of tricky, though, when you bring in recruits and you have a big game like that. It could go bad, and they're right there to watch, you know, right in front of the home crowd. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, uh, part of what makes Autzen so amazing is is our fans, the, the game day experience. And when you're playing two great teams and, and you know things can go different directions, uh, it is about creating that environment and recognizing they can be the difference or they can be a part of what you're you're building, too. So uh, I think players recognize that, and we try to take advantage every moment like that we can. Yeah, there are places that may have 80,000, 90,000, 100,000, but I, I would put 60,000 in Eugene up against 100,000 or 90,000 any place else. All right, let me get the 12-man uh, on the field thing out of the way first, because we brought it up on Monday that we thought you did it intentionally. I didn't hear anything with that because it made sense. But are there two different... 12 men on the field penalties, though, that you can incur? When you say they're two different, tell me what you mean. Well, it, let, let, let's say somebody's running off the field, or there's a play that's called and, some, and 12 guys are on the field. Is there different penalties for those 12 men on the field, if you're aware of that? Uh, not as I understand it, no. Okay. So what do you know about it? Like, what, what was your interpretation of it, and was it on purpose? I, I, spent, I, we, I probably spent too much time on this on Monday, um, and I know what uh, answers we're looking for here, but I got my dancing shoes on this morning, Dan, so I'm not going to get into great depth on Wait, strategy. wait, wait, why? Why? Come I thought, on, I thought it, it was brilliant coaching. Well, I mean, I think you. I, I've paid attention to a, a lot of situations like that. I always think about uh, the 49ers Ravens Super Bowl, right? And the holding penalty at the end of the game to run the clock out. And I think as defensive coaches, you're always trying to find ways uh, to take advantage of uh, the rules that exist. And uh, we have an unbelievable staff. We spend a lot of time on a lot of different situations. Um, and and when, when things are in place, you want to try to be able to take advantage of them. But I've asked my staff, I've asked our players, Hey, Ohio State game, that was awesome. We're on a short week. We got Purdue this week. Let's move on to Purdue. Um, so I'm going to challenge myself to do the same thing. But I expected you to ask about it for sure. We're going to make 12th man T-shirts. Is that okay? <laughs> You're welcome to do whatever you'd like. <laughs> You're welcome to do whatever you'd like. Take a victory lap. I thought it was Belichickian type thing. Or, you know, uh, John Harbaugh with the Ravens. That's, uh, I mean... Saban esque. You did you did something that was pretty smart in that situation. So okay, we'll move on from it. You don't want to take credit. You don't want to take blame. You don't want to take anything. So except I'll for say this, Dan. I, the head coach gets far too much credit when things go right. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't play a single snap on Saturday. Not one snap. I wasn't in there at all. So our players, our staff, um, unbelievable. They do a you know a tremendous job in this place makes it really special for us our fans were a big part of that game we okay really i know i know i know okay one more thing was there a member of your staff who got a pat on the back for the 12th man on the field can we just wait, wait. we were giving out tons of pats on the back <laughs> after that game. there were a lot of pats on the back and yelling and cheering and some other things my mom probably doesn't want to hear you know the travel back and forth cross country i mean it's going to be there you know, in yeah. the Big Ten, and we've seen teams that go from east to west who normally don't too well. Um, how do you coach? How do you factor that into your coaching? Yeah, I think uh, for us it is. It's a learning experience, and you have to spend as much time probably quality controlling that experience as you do uh, just the game itself. Okay, what went really well with the travel? How can we do it better? How can we put our players in, in position? I spent some time talking to Coach Saban about this uh, Okay, when's the right time to travel? Do you do it before your walkthrough in the morning? Do you do it after? If you're going to the East Coast, is it different than the West Coast? 
uh, and talking to NFL teams. I think we're going to have to learn it and figure it out. Uh, but it, we always talk about, hey, put the ball down on the turf and we'll go play. So it doesn't really matter where it's at. And we have to be the best at adapting. But I'm excited about the challenge that that presents for our team. What's your role in the uniforms that your kids wear? I, I just have veto power, really. I don't want more than that. I, uh, you know, my wife and our family got to be a, a, a big part of the design two weeks ago when we did our cancer awareness uniforms. That was something that was something I was a part of. But generally, they'll flash it up in front of me and say, are you OK? And there's every once in a while I'll say, hey, that's a little extreme. Maybe we can maybe we can take that that out. But very rarely. I let wait, 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 wait. What's extreme for Oregon football? Uh, I mean, I don't know that. It's happened, Dan. Let me just say it's happened, okay? Um, but no, there's just some things where, like, okay, let's tone it back and make it about the game and not just the the uniform. But that's something that I remember as a GA at Arizona State when we played uh, Oregon and uh, Marcus Mariota's running all over us, and those helmets are like mirrors. And I'm like, it's it's bad enough the guy's running for 400 yards. <laughs> now I have to see my reflection in his helmet. You know, it's pretty cool. What's the what's the thing you took away from Nick Saban that you're able to utilize on a daily like let let's just say one thing what would it be on a daily basis or ever you know on game day? Yeah, the preparation and consistency uh, from Coach Saban is is uh, so amazing. I always said, hey, the sun's coming up in Tuscaloosa so tomorrow at this time. Nick Saban's going to walk in the building at this time. There's going to be a staff meeting at seven thirty at this time, and it's like clockwork. It's going to happen. The consistency, the approach, uh, the work ethic uh, was really, really impressive. But I always felt like he was able to analyze the situation and figure out, okay, how can we do this better? And he never wanted to walk in um, to a situation with not enough bullets in the chamber. He always wanted to have an answer, even if we didn't utilize that answer. Um, And even if it wasn't something he necessarily agreed with, it didn't matter if you were a janitor or a GA in the corner of the room, if you had a piece of information that could make him better. He wanted to know it. It didn't mean he was going to utilize it, but he wanted to know about it. You know, notorious for bringing guys in to interview to find out what they know, you know, and what they, uh, what, how they could help him be better at the game. So obviously uh, the best to ever do it. Yeah. Because like, uh, let's say, uh, you know, the plumber says, Hey, you know, I got an idea about a 12th man <laughs> on the field situation. Coach, do you want to hear it? You of course would listen to the, uh, the janitor around school, right? That's right. Uh, of course uh, you would. Um, playing on a Friday night, though, that's different. So Friday night lights. I know. But you, once again, the preparation, then the travel, yeah, avoiding a letdown. You know, let run me through what you know what the preparation is with this. Yeah, so I mean, so we've experienced it once before already with Michigan. A little bit different that it's an away game, you know, for us. And I'll say this: I think this this Purdue team that we're about to play is completely different than the team that started the season. Um, You look at what they're able to do against Illinois last week. You got their head coach, who's a defensive guy, calling plays now. And Ryan Walters is a a really good coach. And they they have a spark. They have some life. But you have to to take away something. So we eliminate our Monday practice. Monday becomes a Tuesday. Tuesday becomes a Wednesday. Wednesday. Today becomes a Thursday practice. Um, And then travel, again, is a little bit different. So you you kind of eliminate a day. You try to get ahead. You probably spend a little uh, less time putting the last game to bed. And then when you get a chance, you go back and try to put, you know, the last game to bed the right way on Saturday. So we'll get a catch up day uh, the day after when everybody else is is playing football. He's the head coach at Oregon, Dan Lanning. But do you look at the first half of Purdue, Illinois, or the second half of Purdue, Illinois? Like which one, you know, stands out? I, well, I think you look at it all. You look at it all, and if you really look close at the first half, you'll see there was a lot of success that maybe just didn't re- relate to success as points on the board. Um, you know, there's some things that went right that that didn't equate to points on the board, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't positioned to be a successful play. All right, before I let you go, let's go around the room. We'll play the what time did Coach Lanning wake up this morning? Todd, I'll start with you. Exact time when the alarm goes off. He probably doesn't even have an alarm. Todd? 3.45 45 local time. Seton? Say 5.15. 5.15. Sleep in. Okay. Marvin? 4.30. All right. Pauly? 5.15. He's already got a lift in and probably some breakfast. Oh, yeah. He's yeah, got a, I, yeah, The exact time on the clock is 4.40 a.m. I was going to do 4.47 this morning. What time did Coach Lanning wake up? All right. You just, you just revealed me here. I am uh, 
I'm super guilty. I'm the guy that has a lot of. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I've got oh, a problem. Wow. I've got a problem. So I, and the way you do anything is the way you do everything. I've got a problem when it comes like I know that I have to get up, and then I know when I want my body to start waking up. So I'm the snooze button guy, and that's bad. I know that's bad. So I start my my alarms at like four. 30 but when i actually get out of the bed it's probably you know 450 455 5 it's never uh it's never the first one it's like that's my all right this is the get out of the zone one so a little you, disappointing coach you had weird. about 15 alarms set there i have a lot of alarms set and uh and then my wife she gets kind of frustrated with that you can imagine how annoying that might be um <laughs> but this is the, the sacrifices she makes and then every once in a while I'll be like, Sophia, I need you to set this one because this is the, this is the one. <laughs> like I have to be up at this time. Do not let me sleep past 515. Don't let me sleep past 520. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, we were, we were up just a little bit before five this morning. Uh, congrats on the win and uh, safe travels to uh, Purdue. Thank you, coach. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. That's uh, Dan Lanning, third year at Oregon, former Georgia defensive coordinator. Friday night lights at Purdue and then at Michigan. That will be beginning of November at the Big House.